For Kruma Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sotna, here to unpack his column titled, Has South Africa Managed COVID Well? Welcome, Raymond. Thank you. You criticized President Sir Ramaphosa for saying South Africa managed COVID-19 as well as it could, but the numbers of infections are going down and the country is currently on alert level one lockdown. So can government not claim some credit there? Well, it's very good that we are down to level one, but it seems that we could have had far less hospitalizations, far less deaths, had the government followed the advice of doctors from the beginning. For example, a lot of the things that they insisted on didn't come from the doctors. This thing about alcohol and allowing taxis. I mean, obviously, people had to get to work, but I don't think they took adequate precautions to ensure that taxis were ventilated. I've seen lots of taxis and none of them have the windows open. So there are a lot of these things as well as the fraud, you know, had the millions that were spent on fumigations that are completely unnecessary according to the medical community, uh, money that was spent in procurement of PPE masks and other things, Uh, for the nurses and other health professionals, had that money been provided by companies that were equipped to do it. Some of them had no experience in the field and they're overcharged. So A, there could have been more money available to combat the pandemic, but also what was supplied was inferior. One wonders how many of the nurses who died could have been saved had they had proper equipment. And you speak of government breaking with the advice of the medical community, which they initially heeded. Is this not an exaggeration? Well, you know, there was an early sign that they were not very tolerant of criticism. For example, uh, the former acting DG who's been suspended, Anban Pele, attacked Professor Glenda Gray and uh, reported her to the Medical Research Council. And then when they reorganized the Medical Advisory Council, they removed Glenda Gray and Shabir Mahdi. Now, in my understanding, when I watch Mahdi or I hear Mahdi, he seems the most sensible guy. He's got no um, desire for charisma or anything like that just tells you what the facts are. For example, he's the one who said they should not have disposed of the AstraZeneca vaccine when it was found that it couldn't combat, I think it's a Delta variant. He says it still could have been used very effectively in parts of South Africa and could have prevented people from dying. And that was a few million that was wasted. You know? And also uh, our vaccine program got off very slowly. And had that been used, it could have got, at that stage, there was a shortage anyway. So the fact that they got rid of these people, but also the most recent regulations, uh, when they moved to lockdown level one, the medical community is asking, why increase the number of people who can be at gatherings, because though we we can still have super spreader events, indoors and outdoors. I mean, in the case of the United States, you'll recall that I think Trump himself got COVID after attending a very closely packed but outside event. So they're still not listening completely. And it's a pity because this is a very dangerous pandemic. And it's by no means over. And can you elaborate on your reference to a patriotic response to the lockdown and the restoring of a social contract? Uh, When we knew that COVID was here, I think I didn't speak to a lot of other people, but I got the impression that it engendered a sense of mutual solidarity, that we are all in this together, 
and we were prepared to have restrictions because we understood that the early announcements of restrictions were based on medical advice and inconvenient as it was, like it's very difficult, you, you, we all know, to just work from home. Some, some, sometimes I think there's been a big increase in psychological disorders and all sorts of things from people working on their own at home. And also it presents challenges, especially to people who don't have access to Wi-Fi at home and a number of other things. But the general sense that I had at the time is that people had a, in the best sense of the word, a patriotic sense that they wanted to save the country and all its peoples. Secondly, um, some people talk about a social contract as if we, as the citizens, have agreed with government that we will build the country in a particular way. Now, the Zuma era obviously threw that into disarray. And the beginning of the Ramaphosa era was also one where people were very unhappy. So they got a second chance to try to rebuild, if there is a social contract to do, rebuild it and to benefit from the sense of patriotism. So I think that was a very important chance, but my sense is that they blew it uh, because, um, you know, all the time you read of money that's being wasted. I was reading somewhere, I went to the metro here uh, in Ikuruleni, and they said some office is closed on Monday because it's being fumigated. But the medical community has said that fumigation is a waste of time and money so that you still have these things happening. And lastly, why do you place so much weight on social inequality in relation to COVID-19 and the lockdown? Well, you see, uh, I am not the top range of earners, but I earn enough to have Wi-Fi. Now, the average black person, especially Africans, does not have uh, access to electricity in many cases, let alone Wi-Fi. A lot of people live in shacks or under bridges and a lot of these things, and it's very hard for them to keep social distances or to observe curfews because they're living under bridges, public places in at night, so that... In the United States as well, they found that the poorest sections of the population are the most vulnerable to COVID. Now, in South Africa, people who do have a roof over their heads are often sharing that roof with a lot of other people, and they have to get out at some point. Psychologically, they have to get out, and that's when they encounter law and order, and the law and order was policed in a manner that very often led to abuse as well as deaths. So I think that the rules apply to everyone on an equal basis, but not everyone confronts it on an equal basis because some of us have got resources that others just don't have. And I think for a government that comes from a liberation struggle, they did not do enough to limit the damage on the poor. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Kuma Media's Polity about how South Africa managed COVID well.